All right, guys, so what we want to do is talk about the 10 different training methods that you're going to see as you're following our programs. Um, you're going to see more, some than others, and it's also going to be greatly influenced by what type of program you're actually doing. So obviously, if you're doing a strength program, you're probably not going to see um, a lot of work capacity in there, but you'll probably see a little bit. So the allocation of how much of each of these training circuits is going to be greatly dependent on which program you're doing. Okay? From the top, we have three types of strength training circuits, and that's going to be maximal strength. That's typically going to be barbell driven because the volume is so low and the intensity is so high. So the barbell is going to be the best tool. Typically, you're going to be seeing uh, max strength using the bench press, the back squat, the front squat, clean, deadlift, all these different traditional barbell exercises where we're training at that heavier intensity and that lighter or lower volume. Okay, from there, we kind of move across the spectrum into hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is another type of strength uh, training that most of you are probably pretty uh, uh, familiar with, and that's going to be that moderate loading and moderate intensity. So we're talking anywhere from 6 to 12 repetitions, and then either going by feel or using somewhere between 50, 60, maybe up to 70% of a one rep max. So the hypertrophy training is going to be kind of the bulk of your strength training and something that most of you are pretty familiar with. Uh, with that, we can use barbells, we can use dumbbells, we can use kettlebells, we can use uh, pretty much any tool sandbags that we have at our disposal in the gym. The third type of strength training is muscular endurance. It's extremely important if you're training for military, law enforcement, uh, first responders, firefighter, EMS, etc. And what the, that type of training allows us to now introduce is typically body weight exercises. So what you're going to do is see a much lower intensity and a much higher training volume. You're going to see jump lunges, you're going to see bodyweight squats, you're going to see push-ups, pull-ups, dips, all those traditional bodyweight exercises, but we can also use the same movements that we use in hypertrophy and max strength. We can do this with dumbbells, we can do it with kettlebells, we can even do it with barbells, but what you're going to see is that the weight's significantly lighter and that our volume is significantly higher. So these three types of strength, the biggest difference is exercise selection as well as our intensity and our volume, all right? and those are all kind of correlated. Once we get away from our three primary strength training kind of modalities, we're going to go more into the metabolic side of things. So we have aerobic capacity. That is a very low intensity, longer duration, what we would call an easy pace training circuit. And it's not going to be very taxing. This is just going to build your aerobic capacity and your aerobic energy system. Um, this is probably the least exciting, but potentially one of the most valuable training circuits you'll do. And you're going to see that typically done in blocks of at least 30 minutes. Uh, sometimes it'll be single mode only. Other times we're going to actually have exercises included in there, mostly just for variety. Uh, aerobic capacity is the bulk of any endurance athlete's training, and it typically revolves around cycling, uh, swimming, running, some type of single mode. So when you see these circuits, expect quite a bit of single mode in there, usually at least 60 60 seconds, upwards of three to five minutes per block before you get to do another exercise in there. From there, we go into tempo training. Uh, the duration is slightly shorter, so less volume, and the intensity is slightly higher. It's not race pace, it's kind of a middle ground training zone, and you're gonna see a, a lot of tempo training anytime you're doing a run assessment or improving something like a two mile, a three mile, or a five mile. This is gonna require a, uh, an assessment on the front side. So we're gonna give you a specific pace that you're gonna go run at. And typically, the vast majority of the time, tempo training is done with a running modality. You can do it with cycling, and you can also do it with a rower even. We're gonna go one step further, and we're gonna even decrease our volume more and increase intensity. You're gonna notice a theme here that the big differences between these three and the big difference between these four is gonna be volume and intensity. Uh, when we go into the work capacity side of things, the duration gets shorter. So we usually cap out our work capacity at 30 minutes. And that's where aerobic capacity starts is 30 minutes. But what you're going to see is a significantly higher level of intensity. It's going to be harder. You're going to be working at a harder pace. If you're a CrossFit athlete, this is what you would call Metcon. And a lot of times work capacity is going to integrate other movements, kettlebells, uh, barbells. It can include sandbags. It can be bodyweight exercises, or it can just be single mode in nature. Really the only difference between aerobic capacity and work capacity is how hard you go, the intensity. Finally, we have speed, and what you're going to notice with speed is speed is sprint work, and so it's kind of a combination of metabolic and muscular training um, because ultimately speed is dictated by muscular qualities, but it does rely on the creatine phosphate energy system. Uh, speed is important for us because especially as our athletes start to get older, um, we want their body to be able to tolerate the stresses produced by fast running, typically. Um, speed is not going to so much be done on the bike or the rower, pretty much always going to be sprinting as the primary mode. 
we have three kind of supplemental um, circuits that you won't see power too often in our training. It's going to be kind of more on the field sports side of things. And power simply is going to be focusing on jumping and throwing. And that's one of the things that we have our athletes work on, more so for injury and resilience than for creating explosivity. Um, most of the athletes that we train typically are going to be mid-20s up to like mid-40s. Uh, and we're not training football players. We're not training soccer players. We're not training uh, traditional field, field sport athletes that you see in middle school, high school, and sometimes in college. That's going to typically require a specific program, but you're going to see a lot of power training involved in those sports. Core and resilience are two types of uh, formats that you're going to traditionally see at the end of circuits or on like deload recovery day. Core is simply training this part of the body right here. You're going to see different types of movements in there, focusing on not so much the muscles along the front side, but more your ability to stabilize and brace your lumbar spine. All right, so we're going to be talking about low back work here, and then pretty much anything through this belt right through here that's not protected by the ribs and the thoracic cavity. Resilience is um, kind of our version of prehab. You're going to see four primary categories. Typically, you're going to see soft tissue and mobility on the front side of a session. And then you're going to see flexibility and stabilizer strength on the back side of the session. So you're going to see that kind of sprinkled throughout. It may not be, it can be its own independent circuit, but a lot of time the movements that we use in resilience training are going to be sprinkled throughout the entire training session. So kind of an overview of the 10 different training methods that we have. We follow a specific protocol for designing each of these. Um, and typically these are going to be training circuits. And so the circuits are going to actually come together and build a training session. It could all be maximal strength, or it can be maximal strength, hypertrophy, and muscular endurance, training different parts of the body. Or you may see a hybrid session where you do max strength on the front side, and then you might do some work capacity, and then finish with core and resilience. So these are simply building blocks that we can put together in different ways and create very different training sessions.